In the following series of videos, we're going to create an RCB model from scratch using CAD files. Before we begin modeling, the first thing that we need to do is define floors, and this is what will be covered in this video. We will define the number of floors and floor heights in the RCB model using the RLs provided in the architectural CAD files. And then we will set master slave floors so that we don't have to input CAD files on typical floors, floors with the same geometry. Now this video assumes that the user has watched the SLB user interface video or is familiar with the, the terminology of the front end of the inductor software, so what the working area is, what the main task ribbon is, etc. So these are the CAD files that we're going to be importing. We won't open them just yet, but basically they've been prepared for importing to the RCB software. Uh, so we've got some basement levels and some upper levels up to level 14, and level 6 to 11 are typical. Also basements 2 and 3 are identical. So we minimize this, and we will go into the RCB software. So we have a blank file, and the first thing that we need to do is we need to input the story heights. So currently nothing is defined here in level. So we go to input, and we set story heights under structure information. So the first thing we do is we input the total number of stories, including basement levels. In this case, it's 20. And then we set the ground level. So ground level being um, what is ground. So anything, what this means within the software is that anything below the ground will be ignored for uh, the calculation of um, lateral load. So earthquake loading, uh, wind loading as well. So in this case, it will be floor number five. Next, I'll start labeling my floors, so to match what's in the architectural files. Now, all of our stories are labeled, and the program automatically creates a uh, roof story for us. So in this case, we've chosen to put our own one in as well because we're going to have an overrun for the, uh, the lift and stair shaft. Going back to the bottom, uh, so just looking at the ground level again, the ground level is set as um, the story height number five, which is the lower ground level. Next thing that we need to input is our story heights. So we can input them via the height column here. So we can just start putting the numbers in as so. Or we could start inputting the RLs. So how we do that is we unlock the RL column by pressing the padlock button. And we try inputting an RL as it is on the architectural CAD file. Um, we receive an error message because putting it in from the bottom in this case would produce an invalid floor height. So we just have to start from the top. So we can see that as we as we start changing the RLs, the uh, the story heights are automatically changed, and the same would the same would be true of the RLs if we were modifying the floor height column. So I'll just go through now and input the rest of the RLs. With the story heights input and the ground level defined, we have a total height above ground calculated by the software below the ground and a total height of the building. Hitting OK, and just ignoring this mesh message because we have no structure, we now see that the story heights that we've input are available in the drop-down box here in the properties window, so each of the levels, and this is where we will start constructing our model per level. The final thing that we'll do is input master-slave levels. So before we even begin importing information, we will uh, define which of the levels are to be the same. What we mean by master-slave is basically it's not the same as a master-slave as it's defined in a frame analysis package. So we're not locking in nodes to move in together. What we mean by master-slave in our software is that the geometry of one floor will match the geometry of the other. So any changes we make in 
the master B3, for example, will be the same in basement two. So we hit apply. And then we also do this for the other common floors, uh, level six to level 11 inclusive. Hit apply again. If we hit exit, if we just go to these floors now, we see that B3 is a master level, B2 is a slave, and pressing this button, we go back to the master. Similarly for level six, this is a master, and this blue screen indicates that all of these are slaves and we can't actually edit them. We need to go back to the master to edit them. And we can also see our master slaves as we've defined them. If we go back to input story heights, we just see another column here with the master slave information. We'll just hit cancel. So with our floors defined, the next step will be importing the CAD files. This will be covered in the next video.